Hi, and welcome back to Storytime with Nana, Lynn, and Glow. Today, we're going to be reading Christmas Underground. Now, this was taken from The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham, one of our best-loved children book of all times. The book tells of the adventures of Mole, Water Rat, Toad, Badger, and many other small animals that live in the rivers, woods, and fields of England. As the book begins, Mole is lured away from his comfortable underground home by the sociable rat. A friendship develops that leads to the wonderful and sometimes terrifying adventures that they share. Finally, Mole has forgotten all about his own home until one Christmas Eve. Suddenly, Mole longs to see his old quarters. Rat suggests that they go for a visit. Mole is embarrassed to find that his old home is looking rather shabby and dusty. But Rat, as usual, finds much to be enthusiastic about. What a capital little house this is, Mr. Rat called out cheerily. So compact, so well planned. Everything here is in its place. We'll make a jolly night of it. The first thing we want is a good fire. I'll see to that. I always know where to find things. So this is the parlor. Splendid. Your own idea, those little sleeping bunks in the wall. Capital. Now I'll fetch the wood and the coals and you get a duster, Mr. Mole. You'll find one in the drawer of the kitchen table. The mole roused himself and dusted and polished with energy and heartiness, while Rat, running to and fro with armfuls of fuel, soon had a cheerful blazing, blazing fire in the chimney and the fireplace. He hailed the mole to come and warm himself, but Mole promptly had another fit of the blues, dropping down on the couch in dark despair and burying his face in his duster. Rat, he moaned, how about your supper, you poor, cold, hungry, weary animal? I've nothing to give you. Nothing. Not even a crumb. What a fellow you are for giving in, said Rat reproachfully. Why, only just now I saw a sardine opener in the kitchen dresser, quite distinctly. And everybody knows that means there are sardines about somewhere in the neighborhood. Rouse yourself. Pull yourself together and come with me and forage. They went out and foraged accordingly, hunting through every cupboard and turning out every drawer. The result was not so very depressing after all, though of course it might have been better, a tin of sardines, a box of captain's biscuits, nearly full, and a German sausage encased in silver paper. Now there's a banquet for you, observed the rat as he arranged the table. I know some animals who would give their ears to be sitting down to supper with us tonight, and that reminds me, what's that little door at the end of the passage? Why, your cellar, of course. Every luxury in this house, you just wait a minute. He made for the cellar door and presently reappeared with somewhat dusty bottle of beer in each paw and another under each arm. Self-indulgent beggar you seem to me, Mole. He observed, this is really the jolliest little place I was ever in. Then while Rat busied himself fetching plates, knives, and forks, and mustard, which he mixed in an egg cup, Mole related somewhat shyly at first how this was planned and how that was thought out and how that was wonderful and a bargain and this other thing was brought out of a certain amount of going without and Rat, who was desperately hungry, strove to conceal it, nodding seriously, examining with a puckered brow and saying wonderful and most remarkable at the appropriate intervals. At last the Rat succeeded in decoying him to the table and had just got seriously to work with the sardine opener when sounds were heard from the forecourt without. Sounds like the scuffling of small feet in the gravel and a confused murmur, murmur of tiny voices while broken sentences reached them. Now, all in line. Hold the lantern up a bit, Tommy. Clear your throats first. Where's young Bill? Here, come on. We're all awaiting. What's up, inquired the rat, pausing in his labors. I think it must be the field mice, replied the mole, with a touch of pride in his manner. They go around caroling and singing regularly at this time of the year, and they never pass me over. They come to mole in the last of all, and I used to give them hot drinks and supper sometimes when I could afford it. It will be like old times to hear them again. Well, let's have a look at them, cried Rat, jumping up and running to the door. It was a pretty sight that met their eyes when they flung the door open. In the forecourt, lit by the dim rays of a horned lantern, some eight or ten little field mice stood in a semicircle, red worsted comforters about their throats. 
their forepaws thrust deeply into their pockets, their feet jiggling for warmth, their bright beady eyes, and, and they glance shyly at each other, snickering a little and sniffling. As the door opened, one of the elder ones that carried the lantern was just saying, Now then, one, two, three. And forthwith, their shrill little voices uprose on the air, singing one of the old-time carols that their forefathers had composed in fields that were held by frost or when snowbound in chimney corners. Villagers all this frosty tide, let your doors swing open wide, though wind may follow and snow beside, yet draw us in by your fire to hide. Joy shall be yours in the morning. Here we stand in the cold and the sleet, blowing fingers and stamping feet. Come from far away, you to greet, you by the fire and we in the street, bidding you joy in the morning. Well, very well sung, boys, cried the rat heartily when they had finished. And now, come along in, all of you, and warm yourselves by the fire and have something hot. Yes, come along, field mice, cried the mole eagerly. This is quite like old times. Shut the door after you and pull that pull up that and settle to the fire. Now you just wait a minute while we... Oh, ratty, he cried in despair. Whatever are we doing? We have nothing to give them. You leave all that to me, said, mas said the masterful rat. Here, you with the lantern. Come over this way. I want to talk to you. Now tell me, are there any shops open at this hour of the night? Why, there certainly are, sire, replied the field mouse. At this time of the year, our stops keep open all sorts of hours. Then look here, said Rat. You go off at once, you and your lantern, and you get me. Here, much muttered conversation ensued, and the mole only heard bits of it, such as, If you can't get it there, try somewhere else. Yes, of course. Homemade, no tin stuff. Well then, do the best you can. Finally, there was a chink of coin passing from paw to paw. The field mouse was provided with an ample basket for his purchases, and off he hurried. The rest of the field mice perched in a row on the saddle, their small legs swinging, giving themselves up to the enjoyment of the fire. It did not take long to prepare the brew and thrust the tin heater well into the red heart of the fire, and soon every field mouse was sipping and coughing and choking and wiping his eyes and laughing and forgetting he had ever been in the cold all his life. They act plays, too, these fellows, the mole explained to the rat. Make them up all by themselves and act them afterward. And very well, they do. Then the latch clicked, the door opened, and the field mouse with the lantern reappeared, staggering under the weight of his basket. There was no more talk of play acting once the very real and solid contents of the basket had been tumbled out on the plate, on the table, sorry. Under the generalship of Rat, everybody was set to do something or to fetch something. In a very few minutes, supper was ready, and Mole, as he took the head of the table in a sort of dream, saw a lately barren board set thick with savory comforts, saw his little friend's faces brighten and beam as they fell to eating without delay. What a happy homecoming this had turned out to be after all. As they ate, they talked of old times, and the field mice gave Mole the local gossip up to date and answered as well all they could of the hundred questions he had to ask them. They clattered off at last, very grateful and showing wishes of the season. When the door had closed and the chink of the lanterns had died away, Mole and Rat kicked the fire up, drew in their chairs, and brewed themselves the last nightcap of mulled ale and discussed the events of the long day. And that is the end of our story. One of my favorite books was Wind in the Willows when I was growing up. If you haven't read it, you might get your parents to read it to you. Well, on that note, we'll say goodbye for this time. And we will see you in the next video.